The erector spinae muscle is a symmetric anatomical structure which consists of three columns of muscles. Each running parallel on either outer side of the vertebral column at the lumbar, thoracic and cervical region. Each lumbar spinal nerve branches into two different nerve bundles, the dorsal and ventral rami. The latter eventually converge to form the terminal branches of the lumbar plexus. Each ventral ramus connects with the sympathetic trunk through the ramus communicans. Each dorsal ramus innervates the skin, the paravertebral muscles, and the posterior vertebral arch. The ventral ramus, along with the ramus communicans and the sinovertebral nerves, innervate the anterior vertebral compartment, including the intervertebral discs and the vertebral bodies. The lumbar erector spinae plane block is known to produce a consistent multimetameric blockade of the dorsal ramus. It also produces a sectional differential blockade on the ventral rami and the sympathetic chain. It should be noted that the evoked potential test performed during surgery will not be affected by the use of this technique. The lumbar erector spinae plane block is indicated to provide analgesia for lumbar spine surgery as part of a multimodal analgesic regime. The erector spinae plane block is a bilateral procedure that is performed once the patient has been anesthetized and placed in prone position for surgery. The understanding of the lumbar spine anatomy is essential to perform this procedure. The identification of the lumbar transverse processes in a paramedian sagittal plane is critical to perform the block. The transverse processes are identified as finger-like acoustic shadows separated by the striated psoas major muscle. The erector spinae muscle lies superficial to the transverse processes. The needle is inserted in plane and directed cephalic to caudal one or two spaces above the surgical target. 20 milliliters of long-acting local anesthetic solution is then carefully injected. The curvilinear probe is placed in a sagittal orientation over the sacrum and slit cephalat to identify the sawtooth-like continuous hyperechoic line formed by the articular processes at the lumbar level. Once the lamina have been identified over L3 or L4, the probe is moved laterally to identify the transverse processes. The diffusion of the local anesthetic at the lumbar level is not as apparent as in the thoracic level. It is recommended to advance the needle towards the transverse processes and inject part of the local anesthetic at this level to improve the caudal diffusion towards the surgical area.